Welcome to Out Loud with Steve and Mal. We've got singer-songwriter Kenny Thomas with us. Kenny, right here, I need to know a fact. Melissa Whitehouse said that she's known you for years. I do not believe her. She says that she knows everybody, including the king. So tell me the real story. No, she's absolutely correct. It's, it's totally true. She's known me for a long time. I feel bad for you because she's really annoying, especially on this show. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a penance. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it, Melissa. I'm kidding. You heard it. I'm kidding. That's so me. You wait till I see you, Kenny, on, on your tour. You wait till I catch up with you. I'm only joking, darling. <laughs> no, he's not joking. We know. She's a pain. She's a, Are all British women that much of a pain, Kenny? Be honest. It's just you and me. It's just you and me. It's a pleasurable pl- pain. <laughs> Again, another liar from Britain. So it's good to have you on the show. Out loud, we've got a lot of mischief that goes on. So we're going to ask you something in a few minutes. But I want to talk about your brand new track, Contagious. Now, I heard that. That is Detroit soul, my brother. That is Detroit soul. So it fits in over there, right? It does. Plus, uh, you had some roller skating at, looked like Los Angeles. And Melissa and I were talking about roller skating in LA. And that is not going to be pretty at all. Yeah, I think that was some, I get a feeling that was some, possibly some old footage from uh, Venice, Venice Beach around there. Steve, you're not in it, are you? You're not roller skating in the background. I'm no, a- the truth the truth be known, I'm actually a, a very good roller skater. I skated all my way all through the 1980s and some of the 90s. And when I go roller skating with my children, I can still go backwards and pop a few moves and much to their surprise. But I'm not in that in that video. No, it's it's uh, it's it's purely American. That twenty five years, and I didn't know that you could roller skate. Now he tells me. Yeah, I used to play hockey and roller hockey and all sorts. I mean, that was the eighties, you know. Sadly, I'm old enough to have uh, have seen that 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 roller skating wave shriek through the UK in the eighties. Wow. Me roller skates, get the hell out of my no. way. I'm taking out everybody. <laughs> 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 skateboard you know yeah? i have one of those skateboards uh back then we we're like four or five feet so i'm not sure how how big that is for you guys but there was you know, like a two meter one was the ones that i used to uh because i lived in redondo beach and hermosa beach and stuff so if you're familiar with that area yeah that you know what's become quite popular here now i've got a friend of mine who's a surfer he's a british guy but he um he's got some super duper long um skateboard mm-hmm. and it's 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 kind of skateboard comes surfing isn't it that it is, because I need something as long as a skateboard or as a surfboard, because if I'm being pushed down because I have two or three people push me, get out of my way. Melissa has seen it. It's not pretty. It's not. <laughs> I don't want to see Steve on the beach in his Speedos. That's a definite no-no. So, Why yeah. not? Why not? Kenny and I in Speedos and Smuggles. Come on. Come on. Speedos, they're coming back in. Trust me. It all goes around in cycles. <laughs> So I look that, back, and you and I have a connection. We both went to Catholic schools. So that means we've been mentally deranged since childhood. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I'm proper old school Catholic. I, to be in all in all honesty, I still attend the very old Latin Mass, the Tridentine Mass. No way. And do you understand? Because I remember the nuns trying to teach us Latin, and I don't yeah. have that that kind of attention span. And I was always in the trouble. I was always in the last pew in trouble. Yeah, no, I'm pretty good with Latin. I know most of my responses, well, all of them, and yeah, I'm good with my Latin. I'm just, I'm just laughing, Kenny, because of um, Steve has got his mouth open, and it's like the actual frame is actually frozen on Zoom at the moment because he's in shock. <laughs> just say to him, Dominus Obiscum. Oh, stop that! Stop that! My knees already hurt, and my back already hurts. Oh. <laughs> now your head hurts. Ah. <laughs> uh. Now, I also know that you are a boxer in there. So, you know, America doesn't know you as well as they should have. I'm going to take it upon myself to push out your latest single, myself. I think we need to do that. Thank you very much. No, the the story with me in America was I was originally in the 90s, after I had the success here, I came to um, America and I was signed to Giant Records by Irving Azoff. And um, they were going to launch it. The The biggest problem I had believe it or not, was being on two different labels. I was with EMI Records in the UK and Giant Stroke Warner Brothers in America. And, you know, we hung out and I did the whole thing, got to, you know, we hung out with the likes of Benny Medina and people like that, got to know the, all, all the cool cats. And um, unfortunately, I had EMI breathing down my neck here and wanted me to come back and do the second album, which had, the first one had gone double platinum. And then I had America wanting us to, you know, the label wanted us to stay there and get on with that. 
and and it was just a real conflict and we decided to sort of return and consolidate the market where we were most successful here so sadly my american the american dream didn't didn't wasn't realized when you got two labels fighting each other as well that's always pretty difficult from what i saw it was what 10 was it 10 singles in the in the top 30 in the uk yeah i know i think it was um i think it was nine was it nine? I was close. See, I just gave you an yeah. extra one. Like, guys, you we always have to go a little one. bigger. We have to go bigger. <laughs> We're men. If I can't count. You can't count. It's useless. Well, uh, uh, definitely nine. My, while my memory's intact, uh, I'll, I'll, um, I'll remember it being nine. Because I, I did Top of the Pops, obviously, our biggest music show. I did that nine times. Oh, my God. I saw some of your pictures, and I have to say, Kenny, I'm jealous. You're a good-looking guy, and I, I can't have that. And Melissa knows uh, I cannot have attractive men on my show. It, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, well, the, the, the good news is you're right. I was. I was good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> but sadly, gravity... Yes, you know what gravity is, 14 pounds per square inch pulling on you at every second. <laughs> and um, and then what with time and, and throwing a bit of quantum physics, and here I am with no hair and looking a lot more older. <laughs> hilarious. Oh, my God. I know Melissa has a couple of questions, and I keep stepping on her. About the new single, I want to know kind of what inspired you, you know, what you've been up to over the last few months, because obviously I had the, the kind of joy of coming along to see you on tour as well. So there's been lots going on in your universe. So tell us what's been cooking. Yes, well, the, the touring and, the, and the, you know, the, the concerts have grown. The concert, I must admit, I went to um, see um, Kenny in London and uh, at the um, the kind of uh, the Shepherd's Push Empire there. And literally the whole balcony was shaking. I thought it was going to give way when he came on. So uh, <laughs> very loyal fans out there still, haven't you? Yes, the, the fan base is truly loyal. And, you know, and I think we've, we've managed to surprisingly even and grow that fan base somewhat. Um, but what the story behind the, the music really is that I've gone full circle and, and 32 years on, I've gone back into the studio with Ian Green, who was who's the producer of my first album, the Double Platinum album. We've always, you know, been in contact, but we've finally gone back in the studio and said, let's, hey, let's make some, you know, some new uh, uh, music and, you know, update it, but keep it soulful. Uh, but the real twist to it is his son, Darius Green, who who didn't exist 32 years ago when we were having hits, He's now in the equation, and he's a very, very talented young lad and a very, very good lyricist and, uh, a, you know, a real melody a melody guy, you know. So he's in there, and he, I suppose what he brings, he brings a bit of that sort of uh, young modernity into it, and, and I bring in that sort of old soul, and and um, Ian Green has is, is always been a great producer, so the, the magic's there, and we've obviously we've done another single since then called Got It On Time, do you have a new album coming out, or is it just the uh, the singles? There will be a new album, but before that drops, we've gone back to the old label, um, EMI Stroke Chrysalis Records. There was a third album that never made it out of the doors. It had one single of it, and then it went into uh, some legal wrangles, because where there's a hit, there's a rip. So that got buried, and now, all these years on, the label are, we're going to put a best of out, including some of the tracks from that, and we're going to put that very third album from the mid 90s out uh, and it will come out on some snazzy colored vinyl and all the rest of it and then off the back of that we'll drop the new album so when can we expect that is that going to be late 23 i would imagine that the best of and that other album will drop in mid mid 23 but as you know with the music game they seem to they give away months and years like it's going out of fashion yeah <laughs> so it should be we're, we're moving as fast as we can to make to make it happen and it should all go according to plan uh, you know, in theory. It's always in theory. And Melissa knows I'm going to ask this question because I just want to be part of the band because I'm just an American and I'm... What a thing, anyone that's kind of famous or a celebrity or in a band or had, had success, Steve kind of wants to be in the kind of band picture or just in the background <laughs> kind of crash symbol or triangle, but just say no. <laughs> <laughs> He's welcome to come and play the triangle. He'll probably do a better job of it than me. <laughs> There's a skill to play in the triangle as well, Steve. You don't just go ting, ting, ting. No, skill. no, no, oh, absolutely. No, no. It's look, all about timing. Look, he's not in a bit like he's in shock at the moment, realizing that there's a skill to triangle playing. <laughs> Next time when you're over in the UK, we're, we're, we're sending you for a masterclass in triangle playing, Steve. What I really Send want me in there as well. What I want, <laughs> really want, Kenny, is I want your band to have a gong. 
So I want to walk in and I just want to get it one good whack. That'll be my. <laughs> Gong, Gong, gongs are all the rage, believe me. That's right. And like uh, like ELO, when I remember seeing ELO, one of the greatest bands I've ever seen, you know, when the guy came yes. out with the gong and hit it, I was like, that's the guy I want to be. That was a great band. They don't make bands like that anymore. <sighs> no. I did look back on uh, one of your recent tours. Uh, my buddy Mark King from Level 42. How was that mm. type of concert? I would love to see you guys get back together and uh, go on tour. Yeah, well, that was really, I did a guest spot and I was really the support artist. And at the time I was working on an album and we asked them kindly, would they allow us to go around the UK and support them? And it was it was twofold, really. It enabled me to promote myself. I, 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 stole, I stole a few of his fans who now mm. follow me and come to my shows. And also, it was a, a great excuse for me to sit there and watch Level 42 play every night. Wow. And then that, that sounds like and every night. Gosh. Now, I had a chance to talk to Mark. He was on my show when, uh, I don't know if you know Stuart Copeland from The Police, they put together Gizmodrome. Did you have a chance to see that group? I'm no. I'm talking about a super no, group. Jeez. No, I'd have, to, I'd have to go out and check that out. I'll send that to you. Mark is unbelievable. What a fun guy. And uh, he had mentioned you by name as well when I had him on the show. Actually, I think that would be kind of good if the two of you actually did a song. Don't you think? Uh, Listen, that would be great. Yeah, the two, your two voices together. I think that'd be a good max. It, it would be good. I mean, you know, over the years, uh, I've been really like a kid in a candy shop because uh, I've had the pleasure of working with some artists and that I've I grew up listening to. You know, like like your Bobby Womack and and Roy Ayers and people like that. And to, to think that I've done gigs with them, it's just like it's it's a real a real privilege. And then on the sporting side, I've had you know had the, had the pleasure of singing for Muhammad Ali, and as you know, my boxing background to yep. Yep. to have sung for him was amazing. So you know, I'm I'm never I never take it sort of like for granted. I always feel very very privileged when I get to meet these artists because they are. They're great. They really, they really are the greats. Yeah, Kenny, can I just ask you how you kind of came about doing the kind of lead vocals with Living in a Box? How it all kind of came together? Yeah, they are old friends of mine because we were label mates. We were on the same label, EMI, or really before that, Chrysalis Records. And um, Richard Derbyshire, who, as you know, is a fantastic singer, the original singer for Living in a Box, he really decided it was time to hang up the mic. So they really had me in mind and they contacted me and said, look, we've got a number of festivals, 80s festivals that I'm really a 90s artist and the 80s festivals I never really fully locked into. Maybe the 80s soul festivals, mm -hmm. but not that kind of side of their side of the 80s. And they asked me, would I, would I do it? And you know what? Really, I just thought to myself, this sounds like it's going to be fun. And it, it, yep. was exactly, it was exactly that. It was a whole lot of fun. We rehearsed, did a load of, um, you know, sort of uh, dates. Uh, uh, the big festivals alongside all the other 80s acts. And, and then it got to the point where my own brand, if you like, my own thing is, is beginning to uh, move in a different direction and get very busy uh, with recordings and gigs. So I had to sort of hand it over. And now another good singer, a friend of mine called Brian Chambers, has taken over the, the rain and he's now singing for Living in a Box. And they'll right. go out and do gigs and he, he's a great singer. But so overall with that, would you sing with a, a, another band or, you know what, is Steve, there, some, is there some not gonna band. I just need to interrupt. Don't don't lead Kenny down that road that you've got a band and that you want him to join. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's funny. He's a respectable artist in the industry. He's not joining your band. Okay, so just pull back. But you're Kenny, matter. I can see your approach. I can see what you're up to. Watch Ken him, Kenny. Kenny is well, no, the thing. The thing is, Mel. The thing is, when you're a singer like I am, you you you, you kind of you, you use any excuse to sing. So there's been times when I've gone out of a 17 piece big band, and then I got involved with a sort of jazz jazz quartet thing. Uh, and recorded some piano vocal stuff. And so the answer is probably always a yes, because it's any excuse to sort of sting, you know? No, because I've got visions of you up on the corner of Oxford Street with, with Steve and his triangle, and I just, I just don't And really... why not? And why <laughs> not? It sounds, like I said to Living in a Box, it sounds fun. Yeah, see? He's up for a bit of fun. So, Kenny, do you know about Out Loud and the show of what we've been up to the last few months? Maybe Steve did enlighten you where things kicked off on the 4th of July. A little bit, yeah. I've kind of like done a tiny bit of looking around and I can see that it's something that seems to be uh, growing nicely. 
It is growing nicely, yeah. We've kind of got it syndicated and uh, Steve got me basically to come on as the co-host um, in, in yeah. Chicago in July and it's kind of blown into complete chaos and now it's kind of syndicated on lots of radio stations. So you are the first celebrity guest, so we need to say thank you. Thank, <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> For so coming on which is brilliant. So, uh, but I think Steve had a few questions because he kind of having another man about the house now, he's going to gang up on me like he normally does. So, yeah. So what we're going to do first is because you're the first guest, so we're going to send you an out loud mug, but oh. our, our biggest oh, subject, okay. because you're a bloke and I'm a bloke, I have to say this. So there's a big thing. This is an out loud discussion that has gone on for almost 30 episodes. We oh, call God. it the three date rule. And since, uh, let's face it, you dated when you were young, all that kind of stuff. So the third yeah. date as men, we know if we're going to, you know, take the step further to the bedroom or not. Do you think three dates is enough for a guy or does he need more women say they need, or at least Melissa said she needs lobster and 27 dates. So what do you think <laughs> of that? Well, I, I, I mean, yes. I mean, I've done a fair bit of dating over the years, but uh, and, and but obviously being a bit of a traditionalist, uh, I might have extended it beyond three dates. But then my whole argument falls apart because I, when I met my wife, I just got the feeling from the first day I met her that I just I thought I'm going to marry this person. Oh. And so uh, and uh, and lo and behold, I, I did. <laughs> so I'm did. right. I'm right, Mal. You're wrong. It does not take lobster in 27 oh. dates. <laughs> This no, it doesn't take lobster and twenty-seven dates. Yes, yes, yes. I think I think you instinctively know it. You know, in your heart, in your gut, quite yeah. early on. Okay, we've heard it from the main man himself, <laughs> Mr. Kenny. <laughs> has just literally brought me down to the pegs that I need to kind of yeah. If, if I'm dating again, then it needs to be within three dates. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, but then 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 it must you know the twenty-seven dates after that with lobster must follow. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And then the diamond, yeah, then the diamond? Absolutely. Absolutely. No rock. If there's no rock, it ain't rocking. <laughs> oh, I am, oh my God. No, you have just killed me, Kenny. Now that's going to be know. all over Twitter. Yeah, the thing is with me, I see I come out with a very profound argument and then undo it in, in, in the next few sentences. <laughs> You've got a master plan. I love that. Steve's kind of looking at me like, oh, my God, he just said that. And that, now you've gone back. It's great. Thanks, Kenny. I owe you. Yeah, I, I stand defeated. <laughs> Don't we all, as men, we just stand defeated. Kenny, I want to thank you for being on uh, our first guest on Out Loud. I want to have you back. So as we get, are you going to be touring this summer? Yes, I'm, I'm doing festivals through the summer. And then later in the year is the tour. And uh, and then again, new music. But as as that music materializes, I'll make sure we get you. You know, you guys are one of the first to get your hands on it. Fantastic. Plus, I'm going to be back in London this year too. So we need to make sure that we get together. Um, and I'll probably be at Melissa. You have to take me to one of the shows for sure. Yeah, you we're know, when, security. Yeah, we're called yeah. security. Let the press know you are entering back on the rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, Interpol. <laughs> Absolutely. MI5. Everything that at Heathrow, it was just kind of like the Spice Girls and, and Justin Bieber with all the girls screaming and throwing their underwear at Steve. But, uh, yeah, he, he made quite an impact when he landed on the rock. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, when you do come over, it'd be a great excuse to meet up. Absolutely. Fantastic. Sounds Thank you so much for being on the show, Kenny. Take care. Thanks, Kenny. See you, Mel. Bye. Bye.